the main premise of the Gospel of Matthew is that Jesus is the true Israel. Israel was the original son of God, and now Jesus comes as the true son, and he's going to live through the history of Israel, and he's going to do it faithfully. And in Matthew's Gospel, that's laid out in a series of large speeches, large blocks of teaching that many commentators have noticed. The Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5-7 through 7 is the first of those. And in that setting, Jesus is like a new Moses, bringing the law to the people and teaching on the law. In chapter 10, Jesus sends the 12 disciples out as ministers in the land. And he's like a new Joshua who's deploying the troops out to conquer the land and defeat the enemy. In this case, the enemy is Satan. The third speech is uh, the parables of the kingdom in chapter 13, where Jesus speaks about the kingdom using a, a, a sapiential, a wisdom form. Uh, he's a new Solomon who's teaching the people. In chapter 18, he teaches his disciples how they're to live together as a, as a community of prophets. He's like a new Elisha who's organizing an Israel within Israel. And then at the end of the, uh, the last of the great speeches is in chapters 23 through 25, where Jesus is like a new Jeremiah who's condemning the temple and predicting its fall. And if you follow that, uh, that uh, narrative through to the end, that means that Jesus' death and resurrection uh, is in the place, it's in the slot in Matthew's Gospel of the exile and the return. Jesus suffers exile for his people, and then in his resurrection he returns. And the Gospel ends with Jesus giving a commission to his disciples that in a number of respects resembles the, uh, the decree of Cyrus that sends the people back from the land. So the whole of Matthew's Gospel is about Jesus living through this history of Israel. He takes the role of these different characters in Israel's history and again front confronts Israel with the demands of the covenant. Uh, but at, at another level, the, the, the Matthew's Gospel is about Jesus as Israel's God. Behind Moses, behind Joshua, behind Solomon, behind Elisha, behind Jeremiah, is the God who sends them. And as Jesus comes in the role of Moses or Joshua or Solomon, he's coming also as Israel's God. And as usual, Israel rejects the Lord's messengers, and Jesus is the rejected Moses. He, Jesus is the rejected Joshua. He's the rejected prophet. He's the prophet that the people don't listen to. But in the history of Israel, the Lord keeps coming back, keeps sending new messengers, keeps sending new servants to bring them back to covenant faithfulness. Jesus is the last of those. And at the climax of Israel's history, Jesus comes as the true Israel, as Israel's God, and Israel kills him. And yet God keeps coming back. Even death won't stop this God from getting his people, from saving his people. Uh, the Matthew's Gospel is about Jesus as the true Israel, Jesus as Israel's God, Jesus as Israel's God who loves with the love that is stronger than death.